I realize that when I share this, this video will not be for everyone. I share a little bit of my private solstice practice in this video, and that might not be everyone's vibe. And that's okay. I'll see you tomorrow. There's plenty of old chaos and fiber joy to go around. We have reached the, sec the segment in sock advent where I'm literally just ripping the box. So that's enough to get to day eight. More, <gasps> y'all, I might cry. <laughs> I might cry. Okay, I'm trying not to cry. I'm very emotional today. Um, it is the solstice and I'm very emotional today. Um, Lilo and Stitch is my favorite Disney movie of all time. Uh, when Joshua and I were long distance, uh, he would come and spend the weekend with me. We were long distance for a really long time. I don't know if I ever share this. Um, he would come and spend the weekend with me and I would cry uh, every time he left because I was a baby. And before he left, he would put Lilo and Stitch on and tuck me in. Um, and I would just, you know, sit there by my phone and wait till he got home. But Lilo and Stitch has been permanently my comfort movie. So whenever I'm having a really, really bad day and I don't have the spoons or the language to communicate, uh, how I'm feeling we just put Lilo and Stitch on and I like I know the whole movie by heart I know all the dialogue by heart um, and I just talk along and oh it just seems really magical that I have Lilo and Stitch socks on the solstice I know that like some people are probably gonna be like Tashi you are just attributing like small miracles to everything actually yes that is indeed a fact I'm not mad about that that is the way I choose to live my life but yeah this feels like a small miracle happy solstice babies Happy solstice. Look at these little stitch faces. Oh, I had the happiest walk today with my little stitch faces on my stitch socks. I'm so freaking jazzed about these, y'all. I'm so jazzed. Okay, gotta start my work day because I'm I'm actually really late today. Now, we're not even metaphysically late. We're really late. I gotta go. I gotta go. longest time I was afraid of the dark. My vision has always been a tiny bit off and I was prone to stumbling, to rolling my right ankle and hobbling for days, to seeing shadows in places they weren't and felt doomed to endless fear of the things that went bump in the night. My family are all creatures of the light and I felt like I had to be the same, to forever turn my face to the sun, to bask in its rays and to find joy in its beam. It didn't matter that this was not what felt comfortable to me. It didn't matter that it always felt like an itch under my skin, this urge to shield my gaze and hide from the light. It didn't matter because I was born to creatures of the sun, and so I should be one myself. It wasn't until I was much older that I let myself confront both my fear of the dark and my endless fascination with it. I turned to astrology to help me make sense of it to the dark energy in my chart, to my Scorpio stellium, and then to tarot and to mysticism and to belief after belief to help me make sense of something I always knew to be true. I was born in dark spaces to be in dark spaces, and that is neither a good thing nor a bad thing. It is just what it is. Midwinter and celebrating with rituals of varying complexity has felt increasingly important to me the more I learn about myself and the more room I give myself to become who I am becoming. Rooted in ancient wisdom, these rituals and ceremonies serve as sacred doorways, inviting you to journey within and embrace the quiet beauty of the longest night. The solstice represents a period of darkness and introspection, but it is also the day where we herald the sun, the day that serves as a turning point where the days start getting longer. This is a time of rebirth and renewal, where the brightest star, representing life and vitality, begins its journey back to prominence. This quiet time of the year reminds me of the ways the maiden, the mother, and the crone dance in an endless spiral, a loop older than time and without end. It is a time where the maiden goes to ground and sleeps alongside the new sprigs of nature. It is a time where the mother, like Mother Earth and all the mothers after her, carries the potential for future growth in her rest. It is a time where the crone, deep in the depth of winter, embodies wisdom, perseverance, and the promise of eventual renewal. And it is a time where we can choose to embody the lessons of all three. 
putting to sleep the things that are not quite ready to bloom, nurturing those fledging seeds in our hearts, and digging to prepare for what's ahead. I have found myself looking forward to the end of the year more and more in this season of my life, to these dark days with their secret tidings, to the lessons it brings, and the quiet joys it holds. My wish for myself, and for you, and for anyone else whose hearts and hands are open and willing to receive it is simple and yet vast as the night sky. It is just one thing, and yet it is everything. My wish for you is that you find peace in the quiet and space and room to rest. I like to believe that everything else will fall into place once we have our space in our room. So just let ourselves be, not our best self, not our brightest self, not our self that's busy and full of holiday cheer and optimism, just the real self that needs a bit of time to press pause and be. My wish for you is that the promise of the solstice, the promise of the new returning sun, the promise of the glorious dark, keep you company and bring you comfort in the dark places in your life. May you find solace in the lightless spaces as we prepare for the sun's return. And may you always remember to look up to the smaller beacons that light your way home. Dark times give birth to astonishing light, and the stars are waiting to be gentle guides wherever you need them. I went to a song circle on the summer solstice some six months ago, and I learned several songs and chants that are still keeping me company to this day. Most of them were songs of joy and celebration, wild, raucous things designed to foster delight and jubilation on the day of longest light, a day of exaltation you cannot help but feel deep in your bones. But as the sun set and we sang him home to his rest, the songs changed and became quiet things, thoughtful things, solemn things. And there is one song that worked its way into my heart and has never let go. I found myself humming it today as I poured the water and trimmed the branch and lit the candles and wrote a blessing for myself and for Joshua. And I found myself singing it as I walked to the operating room and did the work that is mine to do. And I found myself singing it as I waited for the sun to set and as I sat in the glorious dark. It is from a poem called The Old Astronomer by Sarah Williams and is referred to as Galileo's epitaph when it's set to music. And I leave it with you now. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Happy solstice, friends, and happy season of starlight. Mm -hmm.